It's time. Oh, okay. Again. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome, Firesiders, to Fireside Tats, episode four. Episode four. Uh, you haven't seen any episodes yet, because we're greedy sons of bitches. Right, hanging on to them. Yeah, yeah we right. hang on to them. We love them, though. We watch them every day. <laughs> right. Just over and over on loop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so here we are, episode four. No grill this time. No, no uh, grilled peaches for our ice cream. No, no. Wait. No, you missed the good the episode. Yeah, sorry, man. Yeah, yeah we grilled yeah. outdoors before we started. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty nice. So we're back, back in the slums again of underground art. No. Just, love it. We love it though. That's true. And we're here with a special guest for the very first time. Our first guest on Fireside Tats. Really? The. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's only episode four. Oh, well, all right. Yeah. 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 Well, you got to get in on the ground yeah. floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, do. you do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're entitled to a lot. Right. Uh, this is the Paul look. Yeah. The Paul look. You all know him. Don't rub your eyes. Don't pinch yourself. Right. He's, He's here. here. In the yeah. flesh. It's him. Not edited in. If, if, uh, if you don't know Paul look, then you just haven't been around Memphis tattooing long enough. That's what I say. That's the truth. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And he's also the guy that slept with your girlfriend and my wife. Probably at least yeah. once. At least yeah. once. Well, yeah. I mean, sometimes that's all you can get. Right. <laughs> girlfriends and wives. Right. No, but so, you can't start really... relationships with Mary. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So, uh, so we brought Paul in today. We're going to attack a, uh, a subject. This might be the first episode that's actually... Um, that might be entertaining for non-tattooers because we hope yeah we hope because um you we, we've used the word or the term tattooable in probably every episode so far we talk about things being tattooable Tattoo. tattooable or not being tattooable but people that bring their drawing to us and say i want this and you say i'll have to redraw it to make it tattooable right. they think they think you just don't like that drawing and right. uh, that's your or that excuse. you're not sometimes even capable of doing it. And that's yeah. usually not the case. Yeah, yeah, like that too. So let's talk about what tattooable is today. Um, what else are we going to talk about? We're going to talk a little bit about Paul, about his background, see if we can pick his brain a little bit. Uh, he's been tattooing for quite a while now. He owns a shop, so he's got some, uh, he's got experience on the tattooing side and on the business side. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a pain in the ass. Yeah, running the show. Really right, that's about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That sums it up. Yeah. All right, well, we got that part out of the way. Let's just talk about tattooable then. Right. Uh, all right, so let's start start with you, Paul. What do we uh, uh, What do we need to know about you? How long have you been tattooing? Where do you tattoo? Uh, I've been tattooing now for about 15 years. I got started mm -hmm. when I was about 19. And uh, I'm tattooing now at No Regrets over on Covenant Pike. We've got two locations, one in Midtown over on Madison and mm -hmm. one on Covenant yeah and so I don't know. you um and you you're an owner of no you started no regrets along yeah, with a couple of other guys uh, two other guys ben reese and michael kreitz like we opened it about six years ago yeah five, yeah something and, like that and before that paul tattooed here with us that's yep. how we knew him no. uh and then before that well trilogy action and then uh over at downtown tattoos. Yeah. bounced around oh yeah. yeah downtown tattoos uh uh so um so about 15 years from now your style's Evolved, but still pretty traditional. A lot of bold yeah. color, a lot of bold line stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, I, I like that stuff. I mean, it's straightforward. It, it it's really simple. So like all the stuff that I see that is like that, like it still looks as good as it did when it was done. You know, like yeah. ten or fifteen years. You know, because it's just simple. You know, it's just straightforward. It's just one image. You know, bold colors, hard outline. You know, keeps the shape and everything in there. So you know, it it's not going to get to be some jumbled up mess you know because you've got a bunch of different you know yeah. components to it or yeah. something. And it's tried and true i mean it, yeah. it, it's been proven a lot there are a lot of people doing a lot of um super painterly stuff now there are people doing things that you would just going back to when any of us got into it you would never think would have could have been right. tattooed uh, on, and on the level that they are but those things as nice as they are and as pretty as they are to look at we don't know what they're going to look like in 10 years when you're talking about all a lot of uh you know, a lot of these really clean color portraits and a lot of these really muted tones that uh, uh, that are, you know, butted all up against each other with all these subtle little transitions. Right. Like, are, are those going to yeah, hold that, up? Like, we don't know. You, right. I, no I, dark fields. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, no values whatsoever, really. It's all about your edges, really, I think. Right. You know, like, you got to have something dark. You know, whether you have, like, a line, you know, like some kind of traditional approach to it, or you have just some dark color that, like, you know, whether it's like you're adding some background or something, you know, just to like have something butt up to a light 
kind of area, you know, mm -hmm. so then you can see it, you yeah. know, like, because like once you get that color in there and it and it heals and the skin grows over the top of it, I mean, like you're, I don't know, it, it, sometimes it won't be as readable. Yeah, you know? yeah. It, it was explained to me years ago, and I can't remember how, and I, I still use this to, to talk, uh, the same uh, analogy to, um, uh, to explain to people how their tattoo will age, because uh, people constantly ask, you know, what, um, uh, w w w how often do I have to have this touched up right, or something right. like that? And you're like, well, you know, generally it ages together, so it doesn't really, if it's put in well, it doesn't really need to be touched up. But they talk about it being duller. And, and someone um, once told me that, like, if, if, if you paint a picture in, uh, on a canvas and hold it in front of uh, my face, it's nice and bold. If you go right. to the outside of this tinted window, this tinted piece of glass, and hold that same image up, it's um, then it's muted to right. on some respects, even if it's not a tinted piece of glass, just a piece yeah, of glass right. in general. And that's just uh, and that's a fresh tattoo and a heel tattoo. Right. It's, it goes from sitting on the skin to looking through skin to to the image. Uh, I thought that was a pretty interesting way to to put it. It's not that it needs to be touched up. It's just that it's um, just older. Right. Yeah. 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 And your skin becomes part of the ink. I mean, it sounds like a crazy thing, but you'll get lights and darks. Your tint, your yeah. skin tone will change over time too, and you have to yeah. be able to cognitive of that too. I kind of wonder sometimes if like, you know, like you talk about using like more muted kind of tones, you know, stuff with a lot of gray in it or whatever. So it gives you that kind of softer kind of painterly kind of look. I, sometimes I kind of wonder if, you know, because obviously like what you see in any tattoo is that it does get a little bit lighter like over time, depending on how much sun exposure you have. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So I almost wonder if like that stuff, like as long as you have a hard edge to it and you can kind of see your outside contour, you know, and make the image out, you know. If some of those tones on the inside, like being softer, would actually work better, you know, because it'll, you know, it'll just get softer over time, so it'll just look more soft or yeah, whatever, yeah. you know. As long as it was solid to begin with, right. and then the blends are smooth, then then you don't really, you wouldn't really even notice that unless it was put up against the fresh piece right. or the piece from yeah, you know, yeah, like right after it, right, yeah. yeah. So, so let's. So a lot of this stuff uh, is going right into what we're going to talk about today, and that's making stuff tattooable, making making drawings tattooable. Um, uh, what does that mean to you, David? What, do you, what would you... Well, I guess we, we've talked saying? about it on different... I, I just remember like when I first started, when I first got into tattooing, uh, a lot of my drawings I did with rapidographs. I tried to do all these different type of really technical things, a cross hatching, and try to get a lot of dimension. Try to use so many kind of uh, linear uh, qualities to the design that it made it really untattooable. But I didn't realize at the time. I'd see them come back on my friends, and they were just basically cleaned up or basically maybe not say dumbed down, but a lot of the, the frill was taken out by a lot of the image was right. still there yeah. and uh, you, you kind of have to re really remember I think uh, that often you're not you don't get a chance to draw uh, the image that they bring in and so whatever they bring it could be like you said their own hand doodle they could be their best friend's uh, really touching or poignant drawing that they really want a, uh, a, tr a good translation of but often we come into the problem that um, they often come in with uh, overblown ideas maybe they want to get them a lot smaller than they can be a lot uh, um, a lot tighter imagery than you would ever use on some things. It's like you have to remember that the, the skin itself um, ages and so lines, the closer you put them to each other, and I think that's probably the easiest thing to remind people is like the more lines that I put right next to each other have a higher chance of blowing out and so the more linear um, uh, that element is um, instead of like maybe just cleaning it up and having basically a good outline or a good, like I said, often that's where maybe the artist wants to put a little bit of themselves into it by retransferring translating the idea a little just to have their hand into it and usually that I think is probably the the tattooable part if I if I physically can't draw it um, there's no way that I can tattoo it and so um, it, no matter what size it is if you reduce it down and you show the person usually just how small some of the elements really will be yeah. and maybe they'll get a better idea of what you will have to kind of translate or take out or redefine in another way mm -hmm. often there um, there are elements to almost any drawing that you can and kind of like it's like translate into a better drawing um, that makes yeah. it tattooable, and that's usually what I try to uh, um, tell people. It's like you, if you can't physically draw this, how do you expect me to physically draw it? And yeah. so if I can't, I, I usually won't tattoo it. But some of the yeah. even the finest yeah. elements you can you can reduce out. If you don't have to put a black line next to a black line, maybe a black line next to a gray wash line mm -hmm. or a blood line, just if it's a reminder yeah, of a gray area right. or a or yeah. a color field. Um, yeah. Easily, maybe you're drawing. This 
doesn't look like theirs because you have to reduce it down yeah. to a stencil. Yeah. Um, but try to re remind the people that you're doing it for the better, for your style of work. Mm -hmm. And maybe, um, like I said, maybe they'll give you a little bit more latitude toward it. Um, where you can, like I said, it will be tattooable and it'll be your translation and hopefully um, doable. Yeah. You know, um, and when, when you say if you can't, if you say if I can't draw it, I definitely can't tattoo it. And you yeah. don't mean like if I can't like physically draw you mean if you're if you're reducing an image to a size right. that like literally if it's right. difficult to yeah. make your pencil <laughs> right make you those can't lines make contours right yeah. you said if yeah. uh, if it's not like I said your own hand style dictates maybe how le how large you can actually make a letter and you can only run so many letters right. together before it looks like mush right. or what we used to call greeking where it's just symbolically putting in you know shapes to mean letters at that point that's not what you really want hopefully right. so uh, usually like I said if you can show them like I said this is this is how much I can get out of the drawing or my translation of your drawing, maybe then you can give them better, a better idea that sometimes you're not able to put in like eyelashes on a, on a figure's face that's a quarter of an inch big, you know, yeah. that's just not going to happen. Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, so, so, your so fingernails I mean, on, like, right, a, a, right. it's, like I said, it's hard enough to do a portrait, right. say, at, you know, three by three, never mind one by one postage yeah. stamp size. Now, there are people that do it, but it's, that's a... Yeah. <laughs> and, and that comes into <laughs> a whole other idea good. that a lot of people would right. say uh, that falls into the same category of being tattooable. Just because right. you physically can put it in doesn't right. mean it's a good fucking idea to put <laughs> right. it in. Right. I mean, right. sometimes you have to think about... It, how is it gonna or you always have to think about how is this gonna read in the long term uh, if I can't you know if if a tattoo isn't recognizable to me from three or four feet away then right. I, then it probably wasn't that successful you know I yeah. mean it's uh, you need to they, they have to be uh, simple enough uh, overall from a design standpoint you can't cram so much shit into a tattoo that you just can't read it from three or four feet away right. and a lot of times when people come in with their friends drawings with whatever their black lines all through it right. um they may want to reduce they may like you're saying they may bring in an eight by eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper and want it you know to fit on their wrist on the inside yeah. of their wrist yeah, exactly. or something like that and, or, um, or or paintings, you know, reduce a painting down, you know, to yeah. the size of your wrist or the, on the side of your ankle. Just not a great idea. Not yeah. uh, there. Are, there are places for everything, and maybe you have to take that into account. And then sometimes the people's skin. Like, um, if the older the person, the more weathered it is. You trying to do fantastically detailed, tight linear stuff on on skin that is going to break and crack and and probably has not been weathering yeah. well. You you do not want to approach that either. You're going to have yeah. to probably figure out a better way to put in any kind of detail, any type of real oh. Yeah, I say yeah. tight work. Right. Yeah. But, but then you should but, probably work your line weights up to where it's more of a, more of a traditional thing. You don't you don't. There are some things you really can get away with, and the skin can't. You know, and I think that's probably part of tattooable as well. You know? Yeah, we'll talk. I mean, it, simple. It, simple. Yeah, and it kind of it kind of works out that, that that you ended up here for this episode because the way that you draw, the way that you lay out designs lends itself to being tattooed because we were just talking about it being yeah. a tried and true so, tried and true method right. so um so uh i mean how so you have a very distinct style obviously you have people that come in that want their the drawing that their friend did right. how do you how do you uh i mean like deal you, with it typically how do you trend do you try to translate it into the I feel more comfortable doing it that way if i can you know sometimes it's just not what people want yeah. you know but like, uh, like something he was talking about, or Dave was talking about, was that like, you, you know, if you can't draw it, then you can't really tattoo it, you know. So sometimes I think maybe like when you're looking to get a tattoo, you know, just because you already have the artwork doesn't mean that necessarily anybody can do it. You know, maybe you should spend some time thinking of like, you know, not who's the best or whatever, but who's going to, whose like style kind of lends itself naturally to what you want, mm -hmm. you know, so that. You know, if you take something to somebody and they do have to reinterpret it, it's not going to be so far from what they already do that, you know, they can give you um, something that'll yeah. work and be tattooable, but, you know, still be, you know, what you want, you yeah. know. Because uh, I always feel more comfortable, like, if I can draw it, because then I have to think about it, you know, and I have to, like, 
make sure I understand why I did everything that I did, mm -hmm. you know? And it just gives me, you know, more confidence when I'm sitting down and, and yeah. doing it. I feel like and, I can manipulate it, but yeah, I have to. Yeah. Or, and you, you take, uh, the approach that you take to, uh, to your drawing is very kind of analytical. You didn't, you didn't come from a, like an art college no. background or all that stuff. You basically yeah. learned to draw on the job, right? Yeah. I mean, you learned to draw while you were Yeah, while I mean, you were tattooing. Yeah, like I doodled you and did, all that kind of crap, right. you know, before, yeah. but, you yeah. know, it wasn't. You know, it wasn't like a, you know professional training right. or whatever. You so know. in your professional career, most of the time, if you're if you're putting a line on paper, you're thinking from a tattoo standpoint. Right. You didn't come from a, a fine art background right. where you were thinking from a an oil yeah. a, you know an oil painting standpoint. You never drew anything that didn't involve lines. Right. Or you never. Mm -hmm. You know. What I, yeah, 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 yeah. So, and then so that's um I think that's important. I mean I think that because everything that approach that you take naturally is. is I think what makes things tattooable or not tattooable. Right. Yeah, Don't absolutely. And like you said, if um, I like the way that he basically talked about too, it's like um, if you go through and you know why you've done something, and that is like feeling the drawing out, that you can also explain it later. I think that right. that's an easier way to, for you to tell why you did what, yeah. and um, and that's a great way of basically. I mean, I, I, you you forget sometimes that you are thinking as you draw, and that you should really remind yourself why you're making really critical and yeah uh, important important decisions. decisions. Yeah. And that's a that's a great way of thinking about it. I think. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, now, whether it lends its like to the tattooable, like often, like so we haven't probably get into some other things. That, yeah, like, we're stuck what on line, they, right? right? We're right. talking about line basically yeah, up right. to this point, but but yeah, go ahead. What were no, I was just going to say we also that we mentioned before about some people that bring in things that are so painterly that they're they're probably hard to translate if you don't really yeah. if that's not your style. Right. If yeah. you're taking you know things into people that they may not give you your best translation yeah. for that, um, uh, be aware, you know. Yeah, and you might have. I mean. Uh, Someone may come in with 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 a watercolor that's really muted and right. and and uh, and soft with no real hard edges or hard lines, right. and it's not that you can't translate that. It's not that you can't tattoo that. You just have to push your contrast way more on skin than you do yeah. on paper. Right. So where where the closest thing to a dark hard edge is in that, just decide that that's your darkest point and go on and make that thing dark and work right. back from right. there. You know, right. and and you can translate it and it'll still read as the image. But you can't try to pull it off literally. You can't. You just can't lay out a bunch of really. You can't put white into every single color that you're mixing right, and lay everything right, down super right, soft. Yeah. No matter how solid it is, no matter how well you can pack color in. Well, we it, said before that you you need contrast in it, yeah, especially contrast, off the skin yeah. tone. Yeah, it's not and a if, white piece of paper, right? right yeah. By any means, yeah. yeah. And, and that's a you know that's a great way to go ahead and to distinguish your darks from lights. And if that is going to be your dark, as long as the image still works and pushes off the skin, you won't have any problems with it. Yeah. 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 So yeah, get, get. We've talked a lot about line and just a little bit about that. What um, uh, it, ways to make um, things that wouldn't be tattooable tattooable? Let's stick with something that's just a really muted tone. Would you approach it from obviously from we talked about contrast, the dark and light standpoint. What right. about a warm, cool standpoint? Trying to think about color in a way of um, uh, of maybe. Uh, I think a lot of times. Uh, things flatten out on skin that maybe didn't look as flat on paper. Does that make any sense? Mm. Uh, sometimes uh, um, because of the contrast of the white paper or, or whatever it is, right. sometimes it's easy for washy things to flatten out on skin. So oh, we talked right. about pushing it with, I mean like an image that should read in right. the round that just doesn't really. Right. So we talked about pushing contrast. What about mm. a, a, a warm side, a cool side, a light, uh, establishing light sources, uh, any of well, I lines? think that I think that one. Uh, I you know when we were talking before about lining, I like to put just a little bit of a gray into my. I mean, I put yeah. a lot of that. I before I even I say in some of them, even from a painterly aspect, I'll try to create a little bit dark, even if it's with a gray wash line or something, something to pin it off of the skin a little bit. And then if I have to work with say more and more muted tones where they definitely go gray or flatten on the skin, um, then I guess like you said, you you really want to try to maybe work with some of the tertiary colors that are really push it just a little more, whether it be a color feel or um, uh, trying to work a, uh, um, uh, 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 say, a yellowy tone into like a green just to make it a little more buttery or trying to, like I said, I guess there's a lot of ways to push some things off the skin tone, but I think sometimes that's a hard, like I said, if the darker some skin or the, uh, like I said, trying to get painterly things into a, a, a field of freckles, I think that kind of, you know, sometimes can uh, often ruin designs too, but tattooable, like maybe just the placement. I have to admit, yeah. some of the painterly aspect, I think, I think 
think that's probably on a oh, I'd say a, a one to one basic like, like what what can you do to push any tone off of some people's skin tone? Mm -hmm. Like you said, making a good yeah. value, um, making sure that you put some either complementary or tertiary colors to kind of push it. Um, make sure that you have at least some kind of light field that like like I said, uh, if it's like I said yellow or white, something to push it as a as a highlight. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It, it, often, uh, you know, we, we some people bring in stuff that's so flat. It's like um, trying to make what people want to pop off the skin. It's like I just want this black feel. It's like, well, maybe then it's like trying to push gray wash into a little bit so that there's a little bit of tone to it or mm -hmm. uh, you know something that way. Uh, often people don't think in dimension. Maybe changing the angle of the drawing a little. I mean, not right. to get away from what they want, but often um, yeah. they don't think in like how to move a, the perspective just a little yeah. to get a lot more say uh, push out of the design to fill a space that maybe um, needs to be filled a little better than with something that's very symmetrical or whatever you know mm -hmm. I, I, that, I, there's like I think little things you could probably fit you know due to almost any drawing to just push it a little like I said, how far you want to get away from their original idea right. I guess it's it's yeah. really how good the drawing is or what the source was but you know often if you find it right off of tattoo Johnny you're like well it's pre-made for tattoos or something but yeah. then it's like how much do you want to put yourself back into the tattoos like I hate getting some things where it's just like flank slap, put it on a copier, you know. Especially, yeah, Rarely do I like to do anything. They buy the like stencil that, and you know? just bring it to you. Yeah, yeah that's something that's right. happened from yeah. time to time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't um, know if I'd say I don't like doing this. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. Like, but I mean often like then it's like, well, you're 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 trying to push your own color yeah. field, like your, your own yeah. color theory into yeah. it or something like well, that. But um, we all make marks a certain way. There's a yeah, certain you know, yeah. like I, uh, right. if I sit down and try to trace one of your drawings, it's gonna be a lot of awkward movements for me. You know, there's a certain way that I move my arm, I yeah. move my hand, you know, and that's just like, yeah. that's how I draw. And so anytime you're like, someone gives you a line drawing of yeah. something, yeah. and on some yeah. level you're like, ah, that really should pull yeah, out. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, often like when people bring you stuff, it's usually like, you know, they've got the six or seven box of crayons or color, maybe a color pencil or two. So they're, they're not really thinking on the like a, <laughs> yeah. a big scam. And yeah. then I think you kind of play by ear, like so if you're, if you can't change the design too much, but. Usually, like I said, I, almost always it comes down to like when they start playing with the size. Then it's like you. Then they're often changing what that dynamic dynamic so were for that drawing. It's mm -hmm. like you know they want you know they bring in that half sleeve, but they only want it is you know three inch guppy on them. You yeah. know that's yeah that's a that's a yeah yeah it's that's, a little harder to deal with on the whole. Yeah. You know? And and talking about placement and size and all that kind of stuff. Another thing that uh, yeah that gets that gets into to being tattooable. Some things are tattooable on one area, they just are not on another. And and, by, and sometimes- uh, but they're just gonna look better. They're just yeah. gonna look better, yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it may, it's not that it's not tattooable, mm -hmm. uh, it's just that it, you probably don't want people walking out with your name attached right. to yeah. a lot of drawings, <laughs> which to me makes them not tattooable. Yeah. I, 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 I tell people fairly regularly whenever we talk about what they want and they have a very some people come in thinking they really need a strict idea of what they'd like to have right. and when i start to push them one way or another uh, you know they may get defensive or or, or whatever and, and it's uh and I really just approach it that way. I'm like, look, it's not that I can't do that. It's just, I'm just not going to. It just right. Right. I just don't want my name attached to it because it's not going to look but good. But that's the best way to, you know, it, it, some, like you said, if you give people, I always say give people options. Make sure that yeah. they know that they do have options, that there are things that you can do. But if they're not, like I said, if they're not doable and you, and you don't want to, like I said, you shouldn't change yourself to suit somebody else's style if you can't do it don't don't well, say that you can do yeah, something I mean, that you don't, you don't know want to you put can, your name you know, to it right. right. that's yeah. A, yeah. and paul made a good point yeah. about um you know there there are tons of tattooers uh and and if one person isn't comfortable yes. uh somebody else somebody else you screw know will, that up for you yeah. yeah or sometimes it's not even that you know you yeah, know you yeah. talked about you, you you work in a style that you're comfortable with and if right. someone well if someone comes here and wants portrait work and they come to me because they know people that i've talked oh, yeah, to yeah. i tell them like that's not really what i do david's yeah. great at that you yeah. should go talk to david so um yeah so something that's tattooable for one person may not be for for another, uh, but um, Tim and Levin now dog portraits. I wish I could do one every day. <laughs> oh, yeah, I really dog do. portraits. I've been doing a lot of dog portraits I've lately. Seen some really nice dog. Man, portraits. I just dog portraits love them. are love cool. Them. I'll do a dog portrait, I would, but I won't do like a portrait of yeah, your it's, grandma. It's, yeah, that yeah, freaks right. me out. <laughs> Don't bring yeah. grandma. You know, like, yeah, but bring I'll do your, your dog. dog. Yeah, because you know? yeah. there's like identifying marks yeah. that yeah. you can pick out. Where you're like, oh, he's got a spot over his eye and right there. And I know if I put these in there, they're probably going to think that's their dog. It's probably pretty close to that dog. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like animal portraits. That's true. I've seen some really, really nice ones too. I mean, some people are really pulling off um, 
uh, some super cool uh, kind of wispy hairs and yeah. stuff like that. Um, what's the guy's name? I don't know how to pronounce his name, but Mike DeVries. Mike DeVry. Mike DeVries. How do you pronounce his name? D E V R DeVries. That sounds right. Do you know who I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that guy does uh, some crazy looking uh, fur, and right. uh, it's really cool. Well, it's all those like big mags or whatever, you know, and being able to kind of like drag it out, you know, and get those kind of like finer lines with your mag, you know, so yeah. it gives you that uh, yeah. wispy yeah. effect or <laughs> whatever, yeah. you know, whatever yeah. that is. I guess that's what it is. I guess it is just bigger configurations that they're just kind of wh yeah. whipping a lot through and kind of building up. On. Well, if you're going to approach cool something and do it painterly, I mean, you might as well. Do it how you would do it if you were painting, right? Yeah. You know, you work like, from general to specific. And yeah, 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 yeah. You know, slowly and slowly get smaller and smaller, yeah. and you know. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that, that's going to be one of our um, uh, short tutorials, and I'm gonna I'm gonna fast forward through I you doing a pet portrait. I think that'd you be can great. Show us how to. Uh, I'll um I'll try to plan one. Yeah, try to try to plan one. We'll come really in. Soon. We're gonna film it, and we'll uh, we'll make you look super fast. We're gonna make it. Uh, oh yeah, we'll speed this Sketch up. theater style. <laughs> where it's like where it looks like you do it in 30 seconds. Yeah. I, I think it's perfect. <laughs> you, enjoy. Yeah. Wait. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, where were we? Tattooable. 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 So we, so obviously size is, is one of the biggest issues. Um, right. try, trying to cram a lot of detail into um, into uh, a small space is, is difficult. Trying to cram a lot of text into a space. I'm, yeah. I'm biased because I don't like words yeah. and tattoos anyways. But but when people try to when they want an image and words, but there's like three times the words yeah, to the, of image. the image. Yeah. yeah, I want this whole Bible verse and then like this really small angel like at the bottom. But, yeah, you know, yeah like, exactly. Oh, That's not tattooable. It's, 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 it's start, you're just framing it then with just little doodles and yeah. stuff. It right. doesn't really, yeah. um, nothing be. would make, you know, like an entire ribcage of text look great. You're really going to have to kind of <laughs> push some image on the and, outside of that. Yeah. I mean, the only but text been, that I've ever seen that like really holds up over time is like when it's really fucking huge. And it's yeah. like, you know, like east side on someone's yeah. back. You know, yeah. like, and it's like her whole back. You know, you'll probably be able to read that <laughs> until they die. Yeah. You know, yeah. but like when yeah. you're getting yeah. like itty bitty kind of like stuff, like I can do it. Mm -hmm. I can make it look really nice, but like when you're 80, it's just gonna look like a black line around your arm or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and that's just go. I think goes into like picking really good type styles. There's so many on the computer now that people think, oh, I'll just throw this, I'll print this out, right. bam, there's the, yeah. there's my type style. It's mm -hmm. like that is also a lot of times not tattooable, or it's like I said, so wispy. It's it's even thinner than the actual lines that you're putting in. I mean, yeah. often, I mean, if if you can get, if there's no serifs to it, if there's just the the micro bit of like, um, you know, like say a little dimension to it. I mean, what is that going to look like? Right. Like you said in 10 years it's going to look like uh, it was a big it was like a seven at one point a five at one right. point a seven at one point a three I mean, like a, yeah. it just doesn't i think some of that doesn't hold up as well no and yeah. it's like uh, pick some i'd say pick decent type styles but i guess my own handwriting is horrible i really yeah. do i think i've made like said so many different letters now that you know i i think i've got a good i can make a open cursive style that is very right. readable and it's but it's very mm -hmm. reminiscent of all the stuff probably of Know, Gloria or a couple other freehand styles or Popol, you know, a couple of types. Just get an image. Yeah, get an image. Get an image, yeah. You know, just yeah. get an image. Like you said, if you have to get so lettering, I mean, make sure that it's just not, you know, a thousand. You know, yeah. It doesn't need to be. The, yeah, I don't mind, like, short <laughs> The power of stuff. image is really powerful. Yeah. And it can yeah. say a lot. And it gives you something that basically you can talk about with having, having somebody sit there for a minute and a half reading read you. it. Yeah. Yeah, and who's going to read that stuff anyway? Nobody's reading that. But I, mean, I, I, I like the idea of it becoming part of the tattoo, and I've used it that way. I um, I don't know if I'm going to do it or not, but I presented one last week where a guy wanted a lot of words that circled an image, right. and I and I um, I laid uh, what I've done is I've made like a piece of like tattered paper that will be a background to the right. existing image, and I've just kind of like because it, it was all kind of handwritten note kind of stuff anyways. Right. It was like song lyrics were supposed to be ideas. So I've written them out and scribbled through them, but they're going to be softer. They'll probably be laid. They're they're meant to be a background to an image, and right. I don't mind it when it's when it's treated like that. It's written on a tattered piece of well, paper. Then, Maybe it's yeah. in softer tones. Right. So it's then, if it gets a little messy, if then it gets whatever. a little messy, it yeah, looks yeah, intentional, yeah. you know. But 
But just circling an image or, yeah. or framing I think at that an image point, in words. At that point, you're using it as a framing image, but you're using the imagery of the banner yeah. and the, the, the script. And yeah. that's just actually happens to be on there. But at least then it's, like I said, it's readable. And even if certain uh, letters don't come in, you know it. If you know it per, by heart uh -huh. or stuff, often, you know, like somebody will be able to read it even if there's a letter or two missing, say, yeah. from a broken banner or a, right. you know, yeah. Yeah. A torn up or if it wraps behind and stuff. So at least then you don't have to have a word per word translation often I, you know i appreciate that a lot i like more, the little dot dot that, dot at the ends of things like yeah. to I, be continued yeah I, I like that i appreciate that more it shows that some thought went into it at least and you didn't just type it out and stick yeah. it on somebody yeah. okay. well i mean i think if you're gonna get lettering you should just type it out and just just, just get stick it, it right don't, don't stop <laughs> like trying to make it more than what it is you know i mean it's lettering right, you know, right, if, you're, yeah. if that's what you want <laughs> okay but don't like look at me and tell me like hey i want a bunch of shading around it yeah. or something. it's like you know what that's gonna look like a fucking box yeah. Because, yeah. Right. you know, like lettering is usually kind of in a rectangular kind of shape or square or something, you know. Just, yeah. Don't try and make it some elaborate, like, yeah. half sleeve, you know, right. of a Bible yeah. verse. It's, or distract you know, from it by yeah, sticking just, shading up against right. it. Right. Yeah. You know, just get the lettering. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so uh, some of these things, while they might literally be tattooable, yeah. they're just not a good idea. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, if, we're, if we're thinking about, uh, uh, you know, with my... My idea on this show is that we're we're probably for the first time talking to people that don't do tattoos. Uh, you know what I mean, or at least addressing yeah, them just, directly. I was say, if you're uh, so just thinking about getting a lot of text, maybe maybe a little probably, less text, yeah. yeah, and a lot of imagery. Only because you know, I think when we but when we started, it was very much an image based form. You were really trying to translate your ideas into imagery, right. and you weren't so much trying to put a lot of lettering underneath it. It's like what we talked about before, like. Like you know, getting the Pisces symbol, and then you know the Pisces. It says Pisces <laughs> right. underneath it. Right. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah, there's yeah. your Pisces date. You know, like right. your date and your birthday. Yeah. And uh, I, I think you know it's a little. Right. You probably you could have just said that with the symbol. Yeah. yeah. One of those. Yeah. One. Of those one will do just it's like five. getting a quarter and writing quarter under. Quarter. It. <laughs> and then going half dollar. Yeah. <laughs> or quarter. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> this is worth fifty cents. Yeah. You know, the quarter isn't worth fifty cents. No. No. Twenty five. Yeah. yeah. Around here. <laughs> All right. Where are we from a time standpoint? Do we need? I think uh, we're probably still. I think we're still minutes. fine. About thirty minutes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's uh, let's take a quick break. I'm out of beer. You, we'll you take a break. And okay. And then get back for a second. Yeah. We'll um, gather our thoughts on tattoo ability. Sweet. Tattoo ability. We're what? back from our break. What a wonderful break it what was. What a great break it was. We smoked so many cigarettes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was pretty well, good. Paul smoked yeah, so I did. many cigarettes. We smoked we a lot. We a uh, beer that was beautiful creme made. Brulee. That was, they had the actual creme brulee brewed right into it. Majestic. Yeah. Mm. Majestic. That's true. It was, it was delicious. <laughs> so we're, uh, Sean just brought up a, a, a good... Um, a good point we we're trying to add, we, we want to ask everyone that we interview we're going to do a show pretty soon about um uh coils versus rotaries right and if uh, uh and, and and different artists opinion on them and of course everyone that's been tattooing for a long time is uh, the rotaries that we tried to use in the 90s uh uh, or that I tried to use in the 90s, I didn't like it all. Uh, but they've come joke. a long way. Yeah. And so, and there are like, I, I, I look at a forum fairly regularly called the Rotary Tattoo Forum. Right. And they, have you ever seen it? They like no. buy and sell, you can buy and sell rotaries on it. And it's a ton of like talk, a lot of machine builders are on there and they're right. talking about what they're doing and they're trying to get feedback. And sometimes they'll even uh, like offer to send a machine out. They want people to like, beta test it they're right. like hey try this thing out and see and they're like right. asking people especially like senior members of the forum and stuff and right. stuff like that like try you know try this thing out so uh <laughs> does so this do you, work <laughs> yeah so do you use rotary machines uh i you, i went through a little spat where i was because this guy i work with ben reese like he he started using them like exclusively mm -hmm. so i figured like it, it seemed to work for him so i wanted he does to, real solid you know, tattoos right you know like and you know he gets this kind of painterly kind of effect and there were certain aspects of it that i kind of wanted to mimic so I was, mm -hmm. well i'm just going to do what he's doing you know <laughs> like just to try it out, right it out. you know like monkey see monkey do you yeah. know what i mean and so like uh i got one and i got like the four millimeter and i've always used coil machines and um i you know it was kind of weird like at first but like the weight of it and stuff because they're really light they're really light, you know yeah which is nice because it doesn't, I guess like a lot of people complain that, you know, if you sit there for a long time, like it, you know, it hurts your hand or something, you know, 
I don't really feel that way. I feel like it helps me like keep my hands like down, you know, on somebody and keep my wrist and straight, you know, because it is kind of heavy. So it it kind of yeah. pushes me down onto their skin, you yeah. know, because yeah. like sometimes with the rotary, I felt like I was kind of like uh -huh. bending my I don't know. Maybe it didn't really matter because it is so much lighter. It's just easier to manipulate, you know, yeah. yeah. But my angles on my like how the needle is hitting the skin are a lot better when I, I use, when a, use a coil. A, yeah. you know? a lot of people, I think, like like heavier machines i know whenever i first started tattooing here you were using some brass coastals yeah. that weighed like yeah. a pound and a half each yeah. they were like yeah. paperweights right yeah we definitely and we talked about that before on another show just about you know and also like getting your um basically your muscles kind of really right. ready and your hand strength really to get it ready for tattooing yeah. long term especially more than seven hours a day right or whatever. And, yeah uh, I, and i think it helped me i think that I, maybe some people probably don't need that but i think mm -hmm. i like that steady motion yeah. and, and it seemed to compensate for a lot of the work that I was doing, right. like the weight of the machine itself right. with, the, with the front, and maybe because I, I mean, I have a little bit larger hand. You've got a pretty big, a larger hand, and I think it helps maybe just to have a little weight in it, just yeah. to, so it doesn't just, seem as I don't know. Yeah. Like I said, I don't it feel like I'm working my wrist as much. Yeah. As I feel like I'm using the actual machine a lot right. more. But yeah, I, and you're using your yeah, arm right. and stuff instead of like trying to bend your wrist at some weird angle. Yeah. I, I don't and know. A lot of people think that heavier machines absorb a lot of vibration and are probably and and, and less stressful. Right. Uh, now, one thing that unique about David is that not only does he use some, or not not so much now, you don't use super heavy machines these not days, much but, they're, they're but, uh, but, but you use, are they half inch or quarter, you use like pencil size yeah. tubes, whereas they're I use an inch yeah. gr uh, tube and grip, so an, an inch grip so that I have, no matter how heavy the machine, if I have a, a stainless steel yeah, half inch of. tube, it just kind of, I can let go when it just sits on my hand, yeah, you know, right. it's balanced yeah. already. Yeah. Of course, now I, I use mostly disposables now, so I do a whole little more, but still not on the level that you do, because you're basically, it's like, you're almost working with a pencil with a weight on the end of it. Yeah, right? and I think, I, I think it probably goes back to how I draw too. I draw with a lot of mechanical pencils. I mean, right. I, I start a lot of mine with color pencils, but I immediately, when I try to make my finer line stuff, I still go back to my like .05, you know, yeah. mechanical mechanical pencils and, and I think that probably helps mimic it helps me with the weight and reminds me when I'm making that final draft probably how I'm gonna I'm gonna approach it as a tattoo as well it's so because it's so close yeah you know? yeah and they're not like pencil thin; they're little thicker. They're a little than that. bigger. They're, they're, they feel, they're like when you're using them, five they, eights or something. Oh uh, yeah, I think they're right in between. They're, right. they're not quite that uh, oh, one quarter, but they're or whatever. They're my yeah, grip was good. always just too tight when I started, you know, because I would just I, be like I, I wear it down grip, a lot, you know? and especially I, I don't tattoo as often. Uh, I've I, I've I've cut back my tattooing so much right. that if I um uh, if I were to use. If I were to use your grips, I would be like just cramping up. Uh, because even if I sit for like a four hour sitting, even with my, yeah. uh, you know, even using the rotary right. uh, with a plastic grip, right. it feels like you're almost using yeah. nothing. I'm yeah. still like, God, man, my hand is tired. I'm <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I guess it's because, I mean, I also work off the needle. So I, I set it just a little longer. So I'm really just using the tip. It's not like yeah. me trying to get right up on top yeah. of it. I'm not, but you're I'm still not supporting taking a lot it of too. weight. It's still yeah, I, I still, like I said, I, I well, yeah, the way you've been I doing it for so, so long. Yeah, and, and like I said, you try strong and like bull. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. you also, you because know, you don't want to hold it so tight that you really feel that. You, it should be a natural motion. You should right. be using, letting the machine do the work. I mean, mm -hmm. you're just guiding it. I mean, at yeah. that point. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. No, that's that. yeah, that's true. You know, the so one you, thing I, I really liked them for was like bigger arrangements. Well, the rotaries. Your, yeah. The that's the only thing that I'm using. And actually, I'm using one of your rotaries, a, a rotary yeah, that, that like you slowed out. Or whatever. Yeah. That, yeah, man. That's, super, super light, pretty yeah. cheap. So you said, right. real inexpensive. Uh, and it feels cheap, honestly, whenever I, whenever I like set it up. I'm like, yeah. God, this thing can blow away with a decent wind. And, and uh, uh, But it does, um, uh, when I'm pushing larger configurations, right. Uh, I like it, and I'm able to get um, I'm able to get a really nice peppered effect out of it right. in my gray washes. Yeah, it's um, really soft. Or it's whatever, really you soft. Know. I'm all, I'm using rounded mags as well when I use those big I, when I use bigger needle configurations. I don't use straight mags. I tend to use rounded mags, right. uh, and um, and so the, they're softer by nature just because the needles kind of right. set up that way. But that machine, I feel like in those larger configurations, and I'm not running it hard. I mean, I'm running, no. I'm pushing a 13 mag at like six and six and a half volts right. it's not very i'm not running yeah, it's just hard. enough force to just push it in there yeah it, it just yeah it just goes through it just right. finishes its motion yeah uh, so it's, it's learn, not like a coil where it's going to have some give and it's like yeah. when it hits the skin it backs up into the 
to yeah. into the machine a little bit or something. It's going to yeah. go in there and come out like every time, you know, because right. that's what the motor is. Yeah, doing. there's no flex. You know? there, right. right. Yeah. So although machine builders nowadays are trying to simulate the two combined, they're trying right. to simulate that flex of a coil which, machine, which I, I don't know. Uh, maybe for lining or something. I, yeah, I maybe. Know. But uh, all right. Well, that's good. So, so you you use them in certain situations, but you're still mostly a coil. Yeah. Tattoo. Like I mean, I, I I don't know. I got to where I was using the rotary for a while, and then once I got one of my machines back from this one dude, and it it just happened to be set up to work better for bigger mags. You know, I just started using that thing. Yeah. Because I I like that weight. I just feel like it keeps me where I need to be, so that my you know, my mag is like hitting, you know, I'm using all the needles in my mag. I'm not like resting it on the corner or something and using yeah. just a part of it, you know? Yeah. Because I can kind of beat stuff up, you know, and yeah. get it, you know, it's not yeah. as even, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, to, I'll always say no matter if they make a perfect coil machine that I just can't live without, I, I like to hear my machines. Yeah. I, I judge the way that they're running based on the sound that they make right. a lot, based on the bog when yeah, it hits yeah, yeah. more when than it pushes anything. back in or whatever. Yeah, uh, so I, and, and that's just because it's what we're used to. Yeah. Uh, it's because we've been doing people. People now that start with rotary machines that never do anything differently will put out great yeah. tattoos with them and, and never feel. Yeah, they'll be. So that's probably what it is. Right. Learn your machine. Whatever yeah. It is. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So know right. what you're using. Yeah. That's all completely off topic and not oh, and, and everyone that doesn't tattoos eyes just. So we made it. But I mean, in the end, do you like do you like cool machines better? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, for, I, I kind of do. Or, you know, yeah. I just think it's it, for me, it's just a little bit easier. It's not to say that they're worthless. Like uh, I was able to do a lot of cool stuff with those rotaries, and I like that it pushed me to like get into using bigger configurations because I think in general, like you can get a lot cooler effects. Like especially if you're doing bigger work, you yeah. know. I mean, if you're doing a painting and you know it's it's really big, you're going to use a really big brush. Yeah, you know? it's not yeah, like you would sit yeah. there with like a pencil thin brush, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. All right, so back to uh, back to the topic at hand, the um, uh, making something tattooable. We've we've hit size. We've hit um, basically pu pushing contrast, having mm -hmm. clean breaks not cramming a bunch of elements really close together that will bleed together or even if they don't no matter how cleanly they're put in they just won't read well together um uh so uh outside of that um sometimes someone comes in with an image that is completely tattooable from a technical standpoint right. they come in with something that they want that's very maybe static or boring just right. from a compositional standpoint uh from you know from from the angle that it's presented you know maybe it's a straight on shot and it would be far more interesting at a more dynamic angle um and if we're talking to people that don't do tattoos but that get tattoos want tattoos right. and and want to put together ideas that that you know will be interesting to their tattoo or that, to, that so they'll put some effort into right. it that will read well hold up over a long period of time um, what, um, how, how would you deal with, uh, with, with someone that comes in with an image that's tattooable from a technical standpoint, but just isn't all that interesting? Give us some of the, uh, some of the ways you might handle it. I think like what Dave was saying earlier, like giving somebody options and trying to like make sure that they know like, Hey, you know, I could do this, you know, and we could do it this way and it would probably work, you know, technically, you know, but you know, maybe if we did it this way, it might fit a little bit better or it might, you know, like, you know, just so they know that you don't think their idea basically sucks. Yeah. You yeah. know, because it's not it's not really anything about that, you know, and it can come off really kind of like condescending or something yeah. like, you know. Well, you often know. what I remember you doing, especially when you were here, is that you often draw in front of the clients a lot of times. Oh, even yeah. Even just so that you get the quickest, the gist out. Maybe they're not watching you every minute of right. it. But you can give them a great... Like here's a little translation of right. what I'm trying like to share, like a thumbnail, and a thumbnail, like yeah. so the, a quick reference. But often, like I said, that will get people into giving you that little bit of, and it's because they can see it. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, that makes like, a uh, huge that makes a huge difference. And a lot of people aren't super comfortable drawing in front of other people and stuff like that. But if but you can helps. crank out a little thumb, thumbnail just to try to get on the same page with right. the person, or try to get your idea across, because most people don't really. They, they they don't they don't have art speak they don't know right. what or they what can't you mean see when you talk. it like yeah, they can't the, visualize right. the terms that you're using sometimes and and um 
uh, and then you can talk yourself to death, and people have no idea. So yeah, right. if you, that's a that's a great point. If you can lay something out in front of them, I bet I bet with that approach, you change a lot of minds. You yeah. know, when people come in really set, and they're like, oh, well, as soon as you start laying that out, yeah, they're like oh, that's way cooler. Yeah, right. yeah. And you don't have to like sometimes. Like I remember when I first started like seeing other people do it, and I was like, well, I should probably do that. You know, like it it seems like you would have to be really tight and like. You know, everything's got to be really because you don't want to look like an ass in front of you know somebody that's going to be paying yeah, you money. You know, going, yeah. right? You know, but it doesn't really matter. Like they understand. They're just like, uh, yeah. is that a <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, Snoopy on a dog. And I mean, you can just tell somebody. You know, I'm 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 just thinking right now. It's just no. It's I'm just gesturing something really quick. You know, and I mean, you know, like don't worry about it so much. You know, like it it it's really not as hard or as intimidating as it might seem. Yeah. You know. And people love it, you know. If, right. You know, yeah. they figure if you can, they can, you can do it, and you do it right in front of them. They're, you know, pretty confident. Well, and and you draw for a living, and they do something else, for right? Them. So yeah. no matter what you put out, it's probably better than what like, they're right. Yeah. Often, your, <laughs> often your five minute or ten minute thumbnail yeah. will be better, and probably right out of their head, you know, yeah. only because you you brought you enough. Like I said, if they brought you something, that means they're at least thinking about it. Often, you know, now we get stuff that's right off of like, here, this is what I want off of right. my cell phone. It's probably the worst. Like now, with, like said, Google and stuff. People used to do a little more research, but now, like I said, at least you're making an artistic attempt right. and showing them. Often, like I said, maybe it's just not in the right place. Maybe they're trying, they're trying to put a symmetrical device on an unsymmetrical place. And then I think yeah. we talked about it a second yeah. ago too. Is re remember, you're probably going to be working up next to that thing right. later. Right. If yeah, they yeah, really yeah, like yeah. it, yeah. you're going to be working next to it or around it you're going to have to expand on it and make it into something that usually is like a larger piece than you would have ever you know yeah. usually thought. I, I've, I've learned to think that way even you know even when people come in and this is their only tattoo and I've never right. worked with them before right. um, uh, I've just it's happened enough times now that I've done some piece that was going to be their only tattoo and then they want to turn it into blah 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 right. three quarters like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't really plan for that to turn into anything so now yeah. I do and right. I, we talked about it in one of the earlier episodes I use yeah. negative sh I mimic shapes that are in the design uh, in it with negative shapes to frame it so that right. I can easily pull back into those negative shapes and continue uh -huh. that design it's just a it's an easy tr cheap trick yeah. that I that I found nice. that I'm just like if there's if there are flames in the background I'm the very very foreground I'm gonna have negative flames because I can pull right into it and turn it into anything nice. from there open it positive back up. or like yeah. use it as a border a yeah. negative border, whatever you'd like to do. Right, yeah. yeah. So, something that, that allows, something that doesn't close me off from getting back into that piece, right. whatever it is. But I always try to think that way. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's a, think it's a yeah. good idea. Yeah. You touched That's, a little bit on, on it a second ago. Uh, um, uh, something that might be tattooable, it might be fine for a place, but not, not fine for the place that they want, want it. it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so often you're, you're talking about like... Um, Making maybe making the design more dynamic, maybe presenting it from a night from a building the composition a little better, presenting it from a better angle, and drawing to a space. Right, right, and that could be for any object. Like sometimes just moving it off of its axis, giving it some dimension. Often when people bring in stuff, they're they're not good at like isometric space, and so you have to put the actual angles that it would need to be in in some dimension. Um, that is not a for some people are, is not a great it, it's an eye exercise and some people are horrible at it they may they may think they're really good at it but you have to remind yeah. them it's like if the space doesn't look right you have to change it change it change it for the better because you will uh, you probably said you won't get to change it later mm -hmm. yeah. and then hopefully like I said a little more dynamic uh, in into the drawing uh, will make for a better drawing usually yeah. if um, yeah. like I said you don't want to take over somebody's idea if they're just not willing to get a little more work mm -hmm. but often they will. Um, yeah. And we were, but we were talking before. It's like often, like leaving those negatives and stuff. Often people don't bring in what is the background. What they may want is a, mm -hmm. how to really push it off of their skin. It may right. just be this linear it's element that it has nothing that really is going to push it. And yeah. maybe yeah. then you have to remind them. It's like, well, with a little background color, a little, like I said, uh, atmospheric device, you might get a lot more out of the tattoo. And that's just something that a lot of people have. I think a lot of problem with like building space anyway. Right. You know? Yeah. They don't think I, in those kind of yeah, yeah. almost like set design or whatever yeah. you know, and I'd say uh, to that point uh, to anyone that, that that's listening or watching that isn't uh, that doesn't have a trained eye that doesn't draw it's it, just think about tattoos that you've looked at where where it was very obvious that someone came in with an image or picked an image right. that was slapped in a place that looks like it's floating in the middle of nowhere right. that doesn't exist in any type of environment it's just a 
thing that's too small for the space that doesn't stick off of the skin uh, that doesn't pop off of the skin that er everything that could be wrong with it is wrong with it and that's you know if if you if you go to an artist if you research your artist and look at portfolios even to an untrained eye you should be able to find someone that won't let that happen yeah yeah sure. yeah and uh and oh like I said, if you if you do get a chance, if you do know if you know that you're going to add on to this, often um, what people do we call it pork chopping. It's like oh, get that small thing now and then put that other pork chop next right. to it and then mm -hmm. flip that other thing next to it. It's like oh, just fill the background with stars. I mean, horrible ideas again. It's like <laughs> go ahead and you know for sometimes for the price of that small <laughs> tattoo, you know that that really distinct tattoo, you could probably get the line work for a much larger tattoo that really defines all the area, has all the things there that you really want. And and you can build on it later like you said you can do it in phases or stages however you'd like yeah. and often it makes for a better design just go ahead and having a little forethought if you know you're going to take that space up later yeah. or i mean even if you're not sure just saying to your yeah. artist just you know, i may right. want to do this yeah. may is a yes it's yeah a, yeah because once you get in there and you see it's not as bad as you think it you know it's a lot easier to make that decision again yeah, yeah. you know like, yeah. Yeah. See, oh yeah, it's easy to forget everything that you went through in a tattoo. I haven't been tattooed in some years, and I have no idea. Like, I have no idea if it hurts or not at this point. Yeah. But every time I, I know that every time I get tattooed, I go, "Holy shit, I do this." Yeah, 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 yeah. Every day. How do well, you don't associate it with, you know, like, because it doesn't hurt. Like when I'm doing a tattoo, it doesn't hurt me at all, you know. So like when I get tattooed, it's always just kind of like the first couple of minutes. are like, oh, wow, it's holy, you know, it like, hurts. Yeah, it really hurts. And people just yeah. sit there for it. You know, they don't move or complain. You know, like yeah, yeah. that stuff hurts. Yeah, yeah, I always. So, it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> bad. I always, I always forget that too. So, so we, um, so I don't, I don't know where we are. Uh, I don't know where we on top are on time. But um, uh, do you know? No, it's all right. So we're rolling up on an hour. So we'll try to, we'll try to come to a decent Paul, conclusion. Great guest. Yeah, huh? he's done a great job. So what, what, let's kind of run through this real quick. With first guest, we came out with a bang. Yeah. We need a guest awesome. all the time. Yeah. 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 So we Maybe get tired of talking to each other. Well, it's, nice. it's just nice. Great comments. Uh, yeah. Great yeah, it's to cool to be on. hanging out, man. Yeah. I haven't been here in a while. Yeah. So. yeah. It's been really nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's, um, you know, size is always, is always an issue with right. tattoo ability. Absolutely. Um, trying to um, cram a lot of lines close together, trying to do right. something that's maybe too washy, too light, lack of contrast. Um, those are all those. I think true. If, if you can't draw it, you shouldn't be able to tattoo it. And yeah. don't and don't think that you should just shrink somebody's image down right. and just slap it on. And and you can just make a little a translation while you're doing it. Take it in the back. Take 15 minutes or however long it takes. Try to draw it, and then you'll see almost instantly the flaws that are inherent in the drawing. Yeah. And then hopefully they'll see those too. Yeah. I mean, I think. Yeah. Draw it. Don't yeah. don't try to draw it. Draw it and then see what see what your stencil turns right. into. Think about it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Maybe That's like for people like you know that are getting tattoos. Maybe it's like I always get or I feel like I get the best tattoo when I just have like an idea of what I want and maybe if I if there's anything I want specific, you know, I'll bring some reference. You know, because it's kind of a visual thing, so it always helps to have something yeah. to show somebody. You know, right. but you know. Like, I understand that there's certain things that people get kind of, like, sold on or that's what they want, you know, and that's that's great, you know, but try and be as open as you can, yeah, you know, yeah. and you you'll get a lot better tattoo out of that. Right. And, and especially if you've done your homework on the front end and you trust the person that you're going to. Yeah, if you trust right. your artist, let yeah. the artist do their work. Right. That's probably the best, one of the best things you can do, too. Right. Take their advice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Follow us on, do you follow us on Facebook? Shit, I always forget. Do you follow yeah, us? Absolutely. Do you like us? Li you like, like, you like us on okay. Facebook? Yeah. Follow us, yeah. friend friend us, and like us on Twitter, and uh, find us on Instagram. I haven't done a lot of it yet, but I'm going to start taking photos right. of David's tattoos and putting them on Instagram. We'll put uh, I'm going to take more of mine, and we're going to put a uh, link up to some of Paul's work because he's going to tell us how to get there. Yeah, Paul find him at no, uh, at no Regrets over on Coming to Pike 2235. 2235 Memphis, Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee. Coming to Pike, or the Midtown location, which 1928 is 1928 Madison, right. But he's not there. No, I'm not there. If you come in there looking for me, you're not going to find him. You're not going to find him. Don't you can look on Instagram. I've got an Instagram yeah. P look 79. Perfect. And like him as well. Yeah, on the on whatever he's on. Sweet. We'll put up a link so you can see Paul's work. He does super clean work. I've seen it age over the years, and it, it heals so it heals tight. well. It, it, it holds up oh, for a long thanks, time. Thanks, man. Yeah. So, yeah. Sweet. Fireside Tats, episode four, in the books. Biatch! <laughs> <laughs> thanks, you guys. Thank you.